Greetings, faithful followers. This is your old pal, Brother Jack Angry, along with Brother James. What's up, bitches? You know, and it's like, uh, well, in the last show you were working on a bottle of De Kuiper. Now what have you got? What have you got for us today? Ooh, Cineburst. What is this? You too cheap to buy Fireball? Hey, this is the poor man's Fireball right here. Gets you just as high. Nothing gets you fucked up faster. Cineburst. Nothing gets you fucked up faster. Ah, better living through chemistry, kids. That's right, yeah. You know, your liver will th punish your liver. <laughs> My liver sends me hate messages, say, Is that all you got? <laughs> Is that the best you can do, motherfucker? Is that all you got, bitch? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like I can hear your liver now. Bring it on, pussy! Pussy! Anyways, okay, well, Brother James' bad habits aside, we've got a really great movie for you today, uh, friends, uh, faithful followers. We've got the 1988 classic Frankenhooker starring Patty Mullen. Yum. Yes, yes, quite yummy, and uh, a lot of the girls in this uh, were quite yummy, including there was a cameo by uh, Tori Wells and Heather Hunter, two of the 80s well-known porn stars, Heather being a really good-looking black chick and Tori being a well-built brunette with really fairly good-sized jugs. Um, you know, the uh, film also has a cameo appearance by Zachary, the cool ghoul himself, playing a weatherman, and you're going to want to watch for that, and that appears in the first part of the film, so I won't tell you exactly where, but we'll let you see if you can find it. Um, now, this film was directed by Frank Henelofter, who you would know for the film's Brain Damage, and Basket Case and Basket Case 2. Um, all great films, really great horror, gore films, monster films. Um, we ran brain damage on the show a while back and, and we were qu that was quite well received. Every time we go on the air, it's brain damage. Yeah, well it's like, yeah, but you're the one damaging your brain with that rot gut. I mean, why can't you buy something, why can't you buy something decent? You always buy this shit that says, on sale, $1.99 a pint, you know? It's $1.99 well spent. Yeah, right, and so is Al and so is antifreeze, but, well, wait a minute, I, what am I saying? He'd drink that if you could, if it came in flavors. Tropical mango, perhaps? <laughs> Take one good hit. I'm blind, I'm blind, I'm blind, you know? I haven't seen this much bathtub gin since Prohibition. Well, yeah, you were there. Well, yeah, I was there. I mean, I was making the stuff. What are you talking about? You know, they called it monkey rum for a reason. <laughs> yeah, we use real monkeys in it, too. <laughs> you know, those little bastards were hard to come by. But anyway, <sighs> enough, of the, enough reminiscing, enough nostalgia. And you wonder why I drink, people. Well, the film, to give you a little information about the film, the film, uh, the lead character, Jeffrey, uh, played by some actor I never heard of. And we'll never and hear And we'll never again. hear from again, apparently. He loses his girlfriend, Elizabeth, in a tragic lawnmower a accident. A tragic lawnmower accident. I want you people to think about that. A tragic lawnmower accident. How the hell does that happen? Well, it was a remote-controlled lawnmower. She was sitting there playing with the damn thing, and she was standing in front of it. It ran right over the top of her, you know, scattering blood, brains, and body parts all over the place. Well, that's what I call genetic chlorine in the gene pool. The dumb ones go first. So you're saying this girl should have been elected for the Darwin Awards? It's evolution, baby. Oh, she helped the gene pool by removing herself yes, from it? Yes, that's just the gene pool cleaning itself out. You know what? Sometimes Ooh. you got to get rid of that bad DNA, and sometimes it's self-inflicted. Well, look, a little chlorine for the gene pool? Is that what you're saying there? Nothing wrong with yeah. that. You got a raggedy mouth rascal? You got to take, take the poor bamboo out of the equation. Poor bamboo? That's right. Your family tree, if it don't fork... You're yeah. probably from Iowa. <laughs> Goes straight up and down like bamboo. Yeah, your family tree don't fork. It ain't forked up. 
Okay, well, you know, well, this show is plenty forked up, let yeah, me tell no you. Yeah, no kidding. This whole thing is forked up. Forked over. <laughs> yeah, but we love it anyway. And, like, uh, for for our friend, the uh, hack in the lab coat, all we can say is, suck oh, it! Doors. Hey, Inferno, why the hell aren't you here? Well, it's like Inferna has to work. She's got a job. She's got a family to take care of. She also needs to have her pretty little butt here. Okay, that'll be enough of that. You can put your put your hostility away, okay? I Jeez. like my hostility. My hostility is my constant companion. It keeps me company. It keeps him warm at night because nobody else wants the job. And can, yeah, it's like. Uh, don't even get don't even get me started on that, dude. But but anyway, you know, no, this Just is not get on with it. This is not the Angry Brothers family therapy. Yeah, hour. Dr. Phil is not in the wings waiting to say, let me solve your problem for you. Yes, I wish we could get Dr. Phil. It's like I tried. I mean, he wants too much money. I mean, I ain't got that kind of cash. If I had that kind of cash, I wouldn't have any problems. If I had that kind of cash, I could hire a good hitman and solve all my problems. Moving on. Moving on, yes. Frankenhooker, right. Where were we? Oh, yes. Um, Jeffrey's girlfriend, Elizabeth, dies in a tragic lawnmower accident. Unfortunately, Jeffrey is only able to save her head, which he keeps in a vat of uh, preservatives that he's developed. And he also, uh, you know, decides that he can resurrect Elizabeth by stitching together the body parts of various dead bodies. Uh, and uh, reanimating them through electricity, a la Dr. Frankenstein, as it were. Um, the show, uh, to get the, uh, to get the, uh, to the uh, body parts he needs, Jeffrey uh, makes up a form of super crack uh, that not only does it cause you to get instantly high and quite high, as from what we saw in the movie, it eventually causes you to explode because it makes you combust and explode and burst into flame and all that other good shit. Uh, he proceeds to wipe out about six or seven street hookers from a pimp named Zorro, uh, thus finding the body parts he needs to reconstruct Elizabeth, who is played by the uh, totally delicious and completely fuckable Patty Mullen. Um, you know, uh, and this film was done in such a campy fashion, uh, you can't help but love it. So we're going to bring that to you uh, right now. Frankenhooker, here on the Angry Brothers Omaha Shakarama. So uh, I'm Brother Jack Angry along with Brother James. Enjoy. In 1931, the world was horrified by the motion picture Frankenstein. In 1935, horror turned to terror with the bride of Frankenstein. In 1990, the makers of Basket Case and Brain Damage bring you... Want a date? Ah! Frankenhooker. Jeffrey Franken has a plan. I just want to bring you back. He has the ingenuity. I need female body parts. He has everything he needs, except the raw materials. Just hold still. Fix Oh, my God. On you! Jeffrey's creation is alive. Looking for some action? Oh, yeah. She's sexy. Want a date? You going out? I'm on my way home, but uh, thanks anyway. I, uh... And she's so jerked to please. Listen, I'm looking for a very tall, attractive woman. She's purple. She's got fresh bars on her. She's in the bar. Now, a motion picture like no other. Ah! A tender story of love and romance. Want a date? A gripping tale of lust and revenge. Ah! Incredible. Some assembly may be required. Well, greetings, faithful followers. Welcome back. What did you think of Frank and Hooker so far? Didn't you like the scene where the uh, hookers, after smoking Jeffrey's super crack, they all start blowing apart and, you know, flames and flying heads and body parts everywhere? And, um... What do you think of uh, Patty Mullen walking around in her little purple outfit, you know, with the little mini skirt and the big Frankenstein hooker heels and all that, <laughs> you know? And then she's just doing twitching and going out. Do you want going out? Want a date? You know, and all that. 
And uh, how many of you saw Zachary in that film, uh, playing the weatherman in the beginning, when he was uh, Jeffrey was sitting in his lab or the shed or whatever he calls it, figuring out how he can uh, resurrect uh, uh, Elizabeth? A little bit of trivia. Uh, Louise Weller, who you would remember from the soap opera Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, uh, she had a small part in this film playing Jeffrey's mother. Um, she was apparently so ill, or just recovering from a very severe illness, so what, although what kind we don't know, uh, that she could barely speak when she was on uh, set. So what the director had her do was just mouth the lines that she was supposed to say without using her voice because apparently she had no voice at the time and it was later dubbed in in post-production uh, from a recorded uh, script that uh, Louise, uh, Louise read and uh, just one of those little things. Wow, I haven't thought of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman in years. I know, it's like that kind of goes back to the day, what was that, like 1976? 76, 77, 78, somewhere thereabouts. Mm -hmm. And then Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman was the first, if I'm not mistaken, primetime soap that actually gained any kind of notoriety. I don't even remember what it was about. So I, it had Martin Mull on it, and it had Fred Willard, didn't it? Yeah, it also had Linda Gray. Matter of fact, that Fernwood Tonight was a spinoff of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Okay, Linda Gray. From Dallas. Oh, she was on that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She played a transsexual, believe it or not. Really? Yep. Okay, well, damn, it's like, I thought I knew, I thought I knew all the trivia. I just, no, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. <laughs> I, I didn't catch too many episodes of Mary Hardin, Mary Hardin, but I caught a few. Okay, well, all right. So, and the transsexual part stuck with you, huh? Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's like <laughs> priorities. Yeah, right? I mean, gotta, yeah, well, obviously, I mean, looking for a tranny and drinking that shit. What do you, what do you expect? Anyway, that's um, why I'm in Omaha. That's right. Omaha, gotta love it. Do -do 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 -do. I can't hear you over the banjos, dude. Yeah, it's like. Close, close them out. The the busted up grills freak creeping me out. You know, that's what happens when you don't eat your vegetables, kids. Eat your vegetables, or else you'll end up like that. Yeah, uh, stay off of dope, or else you'll end up like that. Anyway, yeah, it's a stereo. <laughs> but anyway. move it along, my boy. I got things to do. Yeah, like what? You want to quit? You want to quit hammering that shit back? We got to go out later, okay? Yeah, it's like that's what I'm worried about, man. You're gonna be dancing around the freaking mall doing the white boy shuffle. Yeah, security loves that. Yeah, it's stuff. like, and then I gotta bail your butt out of jail again, and I ain't got. Bro, any... don't tease me! Don't tease me, bro. Yeah, I'll get that call in a couple of hours, dude. Where am I? Get me the fuck out of here! You know, and you know what the answer is gonna be? No. You'll be there. Yeah, because I don't want to be alone with your wife, the great beast. You'll be there. You know, the devourer of anyway, anyway. the devourer of souls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enough about our dysfunctional life. Yeah. Get on with it. Anyway, um little uh, little another little bit of trivia. Uh there is a character in the film named Casey. That character actually appears in three different movies. She appears in Basket Case and Basket Case 2 and Brain Damage, in addition to um, Frank and Hooker, as they were all directed by the same person, Frank Hendeloffer. And uh, she just happened to be a good personal, a very close personal friend of his, and he puts her in every film he does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you will see a bit in the film, and I believe it's in this segment coming up, where the... Uh, they are on a TV talk show called The Motor Mouse Show, and they have hookers discussing hookers and sex workers' rights. That was a parody, a direct parody, of the Morton Downey Jr. show, who uh, actually filmed, uh, Morton Downey Jr. filmed a lot of his shows out of New York and Pennsylvania, out of the local... Um, the WGN affiliates in Philadelphia and I believe New York and I Chicago. Filmed, I, thought, I thought he filmed in Chicago. Well, he did film in Chicago for part of it, but he oh, also yeah. filmed out of Pennsylvania and New York because WGN has affiliate studios in both Pennsylvania and New York. Well, yeah, I remember Morton Downey Jr. He had the his uh, show's logo was the Big Mouth. The Big Mouth. That's what they called it, the Big Mouth. Um, 
but this was called the Motor Mouth Show. They had the same, virtually the same type of logo, except that on this one there was a big engine in the mouth, uh, as opposed to um, you know just the big mouth, which later became the symbol for the Rolling Stones, as it were. Um, you know what that has to do with anything, I have no idea. But it, the host was uh, even looked like Morton Downey Jr. And this that uh, the whole sequence was an homage because apparently Frank Hentelofter, the director and producer of the film and the writer was a big fan of, of Dent Morton Downey Jr. and loved his show and put him in there as an homage to Morton who I believe had passed away or was or had, was, or had uh, left uh, his show at that time. Now, all right, so, uh, so basically here the uh, show goes on to talk about Jeffrey and his trying to save his girlfriend, who is this reanimated monster, who unfortunately because of the, the, his reanimation serum and the electricity that was used to revive her, anytime she has sex with a, a man, he, this guy will end up eventually bursting into flames and or exploding, you know. Uh, you'll see the scene with the uh, rather wimpy looking little John is getting his rocks off all of a sudden. His head blows off. You know, she picks up the head, and the last thing the head says is, oh, that was so great, you know. I'm sorry if some, you know, some woman's cooch causes me to explode. I don't think I'm going to, the last words that my disembodied head is going to utter is going to be, that was great. Wow, I got to scrub that off the mental yeah, tape deck. Yeah, it's like you had to get Excuse that off me. the mental tape deck. Um, so it's like, Wow. Now, this film also has some cameo appearances, as I said earlier, by two well-known 80s porn actresses, Tori Wells and Heather Hunter. Um, there were some rumors that the director, Frank Handelhofer, uh, had some connections, albeit somewhat nebulous, to the adult film community. Uh, there was even talk that he had directed or produced several films under another name or pseudonym and that uh, Heather Hunter and Tori Wells had starred in those films and they needed to basically do some uh, what's called straight credits for for them to obtain their SAG cards and keep their SAG memberships open uh, and that's why they were in this film um, but you know still they looked good in their little lingerie outfits they looked good when they blew up and and you know we like their films. They just look good. They just look good. You know, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar, people. Um, but we're going to get back to the uh, back to the movie Frankenhooker here on the Angry Brothers Omaha Shockerama. Enjoy. These aren't my arms. This isn't my hand. These aren't my legs. This isn't my breast. Look at me. What have you done? Take it easy, all right? Just calm down. I can explain everything. I had to make a few changes, that's all. There wasn't enough of you left to fry an egg with. I feel so strange, as if there were so many different women inside of me. All right, maybe I had to do a few unorthodox things, but, you know, things didn't turn out so bad. I mean, I love you. I love you. And you're alive. And I love you, Elizabeth. Now more than ever, I love you. And we're going to spend the rest of our lives together, me and you. Oh, God! Why did you do this? Who are you? No, 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 no. The question is, who are you? And for what I've been hearing, your ass is mine. I'm taking possession of it now. You hear me, honey? You hear me, Crystal? You hear me, Angel? Your truth? Snow? Sugar? Monkey, I know you're all in there, every one of you. Well, Sorrow's here to take care of you again, and Sorrow knows what you need to get in the right state of mind. Some of this sweet, sweet rock. Oh, shit. 
here. Get the fuck away from me. followers welcome back what did you think of uh, Frankenhooker uh, what did you think of that ending where uh, apparently Jeffrey ends up be getting a taste of his own medicine and having his either his head chopped off or blown off or ripped off but anyway whatever whatever method it was his head does leave his body and is uh, sewn back on by his girlfriend Elizabeth as Frankenhooker but unfortunately being in the fact that you know, you were letting a woman do the operation. The it did tend to get somewhat screwed up, and she ended up sewing his head back on a the reconstructed body parts of the hookers. So basically, you have a guy's head on this female body with a mismatched pair of tits and everything else. You know, a fitting, if not poetic, justice and a fitting end for the movie. Basically, Jeffrey wondering what the hell happened as he's playing with his big boobs and all that. Um, now, uh, a little bit of, another little bit of trivia about the film here, and is there something you want to say, Brother James? Why am I here? Well, are, are we going to get into a discussion of metaphysics? Why are any of us here? You know, if we sit around all day and we watch these crappy movies, why are we not doing anything substantial with our lives? We are doing something substantial with our lives. We're educating our viewers on the, uh, the relevance of the B-movie genre, and we're keeping the whorehouse genre alive. It's a noble cause. Yeah, you mean our viewers. You mean the three guys sitting in their basements because they can't get women? Is that what you're I'm pretty sure it's more than three guys. Is that what you're telling me? Pretty much, yeah. But hey, we love our viewers. You know, and our viewers love us. All the requests we get for photos, the cards and letters we get, the uh, responses we get the through restraining our... orders. Well, those two. I mean, it says, hey, that's yes. Just, the sheriff brings us a little surprise at least once a week. Well, that's just another form of love. You know, it's like nothing says love like a good restraining order. Let me tell you. No, I mean Frankenhooker was what it was. It didn't have to be anything more than what it was. That was two hours of schlock horror. And, you know, schlock horror has its place in the universe, just as the Angry Brothers do. Uh, just like that loser in the lab coat. I, <laughs> his name escapes me at the moment. Yes, it's Just like, like those dysfunctional bimbos that we get to sit on the couch with us. Hey, 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 now let's not be calling anybody dysfunctional bimbos here. It's like they're all great girls and they do give them their... Yeah, when they show up! They do give them their time to come and, you know, do the show with us. And unfortunately, people do have lives. They have obligations and families. And, you know, for whatever reason, all we ask is that, hey, if you're not going to make it, call us and let us know. You know, we're not going to yell at you. We're not going to bite your head off or anything. Well, this tubby bastard might, but... Tubby bastard? I am one pant size up since high school. <laughs> Yeah. What do you do, Sally? Shut it, bitch. Anyway, um... So you want the truth? You, you can't, can't handle, handle the, the truth. truth. I love that bit. Jack Nicholson did that bit so well. You need me, you want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. And no, I will not pluck out your eye and skull fuck you. That was Lear. That was Lear me. That wasn't Jack Nicholson. Oh yeah, he, that's what he said he was going to do. He was going to pop out Tom uh, Cruise's eye and skull fuck him. 
Uh, I missed that. I missed that. It was part. on the trial. That was the main part of the movie. How the hell could you miss that? I probably got up to go to the bathroom or that something. That was like saying I missed the whole Death Star trench sequence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. You're, Loser. You're a Star Wars geek. Who knew? Loser. Brother James, fanboy. Loser. Lose that. But anyway, the film was done, uh, you will notice that a lot of the special effects were kind of cheesy, and this was actually done intentionally, oh. because the producers of the film and the director wanted it done that way as an homage to the grade B schlock films like The Brain That Wouldn't Die, um, Teenagers From Outer Space, uh, it came from space, The Crawling Eye, and so many others. And the one all... you didn't see, meaning our, we got no budget. Yeah. My credit card is maxed out. That's why they did well, it. Because they couldn't afford to do it any better. Well, that, uh, well, they could have done it better, but it was done the way it was done to be as a homage, as an homage to those great grade B classic films of the 60s and 70s. Um, you know, and that was Hend Hendel Offers. That was his stock and trade, was making these uh, films in that style. And he did it quite well. Because he didn't have no money. Well, you can have money and still want to make a, a, a cheesy film. It's, it's the genre. It's all about the genre. Now, next week, we're going to be bringing you another good film. We're going to be bringing you the 1981 classic, Sorority Babes at the Slime Bowlerama. And the, the week after, we will be bringing you Outland, starring Sean Connery. Uh, we had a few technical issues with uh, getting a, cop, uh, a really viable copy of Outland, so it's, I had to look for other sources, and I'm still working on that. But we will bring, be bringing you that in the coming weeks. Uh, we'll also be bringing you our indie, tri indie tribute or our indie horror film show, where we'll be featuring uh, a horror film called Twisted, which is done by a very good friend of ours named Twiz Twisted out of, believe it or not, out of Oslo, Norway. Uh, he contacted us and asked if we would run this film. And we're also going to be running a film uh, uh, called uh, Be Right Back, which is a romantic comedy with kind of a, a very comedic twist. I mean, it's going to be a, somewhat of a departure from what we're doing here on the, uh, on the show, but we hope you'll like it. And we'll be bringing you that as well. It's a chick flick, so make it date night. Yes, bring yes, bring your bring that special someone. You know, cuddle up on the couch, watch the Angry Brothers bringing you this romantic comedy. Uh, you know, and you will see more information about it on the blog coming up here. So, with that being said, hey, have we heard anything from uh, Lee Turner? Lately? Uh, well, no, we haven't. I know his mom's been having some more issues with her health, and we do send a lot of good vibes out to Lee, and we ask that our viewers, all our faithful followers, do the same. Um, we know that Lee's been busy and that he's got a lot of things on his plate right now, and we understand completely, and, you know, we wish him well. And Hey, also, uh, while, we're, while we're sending out good vibes, I uh, want to send out a shout to Chris McCabe, uh, Yes, Oliver of Oliver's Stoner Family Friendly Twisted Bargain Basement Freak Show. I can't see Yeah, that. that's a fucking long and ass And then title. Dale Strebel. Dale Strebel, Uncle Edward from It Came From The Basement. Uh, two great horror hosts, two really great individuals, and two really great friends. You know, we love you guys. And, you know, we also want to send a shout out to our good friend Jim Morrison, who's organizing the Congregation Comic Book Convention. That'll be coming up on the uh, 24th, 25th, and 26th of April at the Holiday Inn Central. We hope you'll all go down there and catch that. Brother Jack will be down there, and possibly with Brother James or one of the girls. We'll be going around interviewing people, uh, interviewing the cosplayers. We'll shoot a segment for the show, and, um, you know, and you'll see us down there. And you'll also hopefully see us at the O Comic Con convention, which I believe takes place in July. We don't have an exact date on that. But we have been in touch with them, and we are working on getting our press credentials for them so we can go cover that event as well. And you'll see us there also uh, on April 20th, uh, which is a Monday, at 3, uh, I'm sorry, at 3 o'clock p.m., there will be a big uh, pro-marijuana legalization rally. It will be at the Green Bridge, which is right across from the Dodge Street entrance of the UNO campus. It's 
about like 38th and 38th and Dodge, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's the big pedestrian footbridge that goes over Dodge Street. Uh, that's more like uh, that's more like 58th, dude. Or I'm sorry, it's yeah, you're right. It's more. If you like go to 38th, hell, you're almost down to uh, Midtown Crossing. Okay, yes, you're right. You're 100 percent right. Uh, it's in the neighborhood of like 58th and Dodge, or just outside of the UNO campus entrance. You'll see the big crowd there, and there'll be banners, and uh, there's going to be free food, free uh, free drinks. Uh, there's going to be some local bands. We're going to be down there covering the event, so we're going to be interviewing people. Come on down and say hi, and show your support for getting marijuana legalized in the state of Nebraska. Like it's really going to happen? It'll happen. This is Omaha. They'll never legalize. Come on. They, it'll happen, believe me. It'll happen. And uh, I believe our good friend Andy Shambaugh, who is running for Andy. state senate, uh, state senate uh, from District 2, uh, he is going to be down there. And there's running on the Libertarian ticket. He's running on the Libertarian ticket, so I'm sure there'll be some other people from the Libertarian Party down there with some other things to say. So come on down. Um, you know, if you want a free autograph uh, picture of the Angry Brothers, come on down. Let us know your address, and we'll make sure you get that. And that. No cost to yourself. Um, so I'm Brother Jack Angry, along with the Sponge. You know, look, look. Oh, 95% antifreeze, not fit for human consumption. Okay, I ain't human. Last time I checked. What are you talking about? You ain't you ain't a zombie anymore. You remember? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you fucked around with my spell book, you know, we you got your ass zapped into like the eighth dimension or whatever it is, and we had to call Sangria to come get you out. Yeah, thanks for showing up, Doc. Appreciate it. Well, it's like people have car trouble, you know, it's like we understand completely, so it's just let us know what's going on. Um yeah, okay, that'll be enough out of you. You know. Remember, tolerance. We're all about tolerance here. Excuse me, this is not the Tolerant Brothers Omaha Shock. No, we're it's the Angry Brothers! That's right, we're the Angry Brothers, baby. You know? Some of us are more angry than others. Well, it's like, somebody's got to stay sober, i got to drive later, so... But anyway, um... Good night, unpleasant dreams, and keep America on top, y'all. Let's watch horror hosts. Yeah, well, next time we're in town, just watch. Come up out of your parents' basements every now and again. Contribute to the economy. Thank you, and good night. Peace out, homies.